Today is Monday the 13th of March 2023 and I'm looking up and seeing I forgot to put my collar on just a moment. We are here at the Rectory of St. John's Church for morning prayer according to the 1928 prayer book bolstered by 1662 and so we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands to set forth his most worthy praise to hear his most holy word and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do earn their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, the greatness of the God who has set his love upon us um, in true thanksgiving for uh, uh, his gracious shepherding and salvation. Let us give full attention to his word that we may know his will and walk in his ways. Uh, the psalm appointed for the 13th day of the month of morning prayer, um, Psalm 68 on page 419. Uh, this psalm uh, is a kind of processional liturgy. It begins with um, the Ark of the Covenant, um, uh, God's uh, arising, um, going forth, 
Uh, so it traces um, God's progress uh, through the wilderness into the promised land, all the way from Mount Sinai up to Mount Sion. Uh, but it also then prog traces God's, the progress of uh, Christ in his ascension uh, to the Father's right hand and the uh, going forth of the gospel, um, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Um, uh, and it is uh, a psalm also of Pentecost because it celebrates the gifts uh, of the ascended Christ, uh, which he bestows on the church for uh, the publishing of the gospel. So very rich psalm, both in the uh, what it prefigures and also in, in what it recalls. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that flee, hate him flee before him. Like as the smoke vanisheth, so shalt thou drive them away. And like as wax melteth in the fire, so let the ungodly perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. O sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens. Praise him in his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defendeth the cause of the widows, even God in his holy habitation. He is the God that maketh men to be of one mind in an house, and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity, but letteth the runagates continue in scarceness. O God, when thou wentest forth before the people, when thou wentest through the wilderness, the earth shook, and the heavens dropped at the presence of God. Even as Zina also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel, Thou, O God, sentest a gracious rain upon thine inheritance, and refreshedst it when it was weary. Thy congregation shall dwell therein. For thou, O God, hast of thy goodness prepared for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women that bear the tidings. Kings with their armies did flee and were discomfited, and they of the household divided the spoil. Though ye have lain among the sheepfolds, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove that is covered with silver wings and her feathers like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings for their sake, then were they as white as snow and salmon. As the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill. Even on a high hill is the hill of Bashan. Why mock ye so ye high hills? This is God's hill, in which it pleaseth him to dwell. Yea, the Lord will abide in it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. And the Lord is among them, as in the holy place of Sinai. Thou art gone up on high, thou hast led captivity captive, and received gifts from men, yea, even from thine enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Praised be the Lord daily, even the God who helpeth us and poureth his benefits upon us. He is our God, even the God of whom cometh salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. God shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such a one as goeth on still in his wickedness. The Lord has said, I will bring my people again as I did from Bashan. Mine own will I bring again as I did some time from the deep of the sea, that thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies, and that the tongue of thy dogs may be read through the same. It is well seen, O God, how thou goest, how God, my God and King, goest in the sanctuary. So we've traced this journey through the wilderness his provision for his people, uh, his taking up abode in Sinai, uh, his victories over their enemies. And now uh, we have uh, the processional liturgy uh, approaching the temple, the tabernacle or temple. The singers go before the minstrels follow after in the midst of the damsels playing with the timbrels. Give thanks unto the God, the Lord, and the congregation, ye that are the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin and their ruler and the princes of Judah, their council the princes of Zebulon, and the princes of Naphtali. Thy God has sent forth strength for thee. Establish the thing, O God, that thou hast wrought in us. For thy temple's sake at Jerusalem shall kings bring present unto thee. Rebuke thou the dragon and the bull with the leaders of the heathen, so that they humbly bring pieces of silver. Scattered are the peoples that delight in war. Then shall the princes come out of Egypt, and Moriah's land shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, O ye kingdoms of the earth, O sing praises unto the Lord, 
who sitteth in the heavens over all from the beginning. Lo, he doth send out his voice, yea, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye the power to God over Israel. His worship and strength is in the clouds. O God, wonderful art thou in thy holy places, even the God of Israel. He will give strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 37th verse of the 12th chapter of the uh, second book of Moses called Exodus. And here we hear about the, the actual Exodus itself. The going out from Egypt begins. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sarkoth, about 600,000 on foot, that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened. Because they were thrust out of Egypt, then could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of the four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. A reference there to Passover. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Here endeth the first lesson. O all ye works of the Lord, bless you the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless you the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless you the Lord. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless you the Lord. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless you the Lord. O ye stars of heaven, bless you the Lord. O ye showers and dew, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless you the Lord. O ye fire and heat, bless you the Lord. O ye winter and summer, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frosts, bless you the Lord. O ye frost and cold, bless you the Lord. O ye ice and snow, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless you the Lord. O ye light and darkness, bless you the Lord. O ye lightness and clouds, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Uh, here beginneth the 27th verse of the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Uh, Jesus, of course, has had his long conversation with the woman of Samaria. Now we hear the outcome of it uh, with the return of the disciples who've been in Samaria buying um, uh, supplies. Uh, then we go on to hear about the second miracle that Jesus did in Cana. And upon this came his disciples um, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Uh, not only um, do rabbis normally uh, limit their uh, relations with women to those who are in their family and so on. But also this is a Samaritan um, and between the Jews and the Samaritans there is uh, great distance. Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why talkest thou with her? 
The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? So this is a common motif in, in John in which Jesus speaks at a, you might say, a spiritual level, and they take him um, uh, in a very literal, uh, unperceptive way. Jesus saith unto them, My meat, his food, that is, is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye there yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receive wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors." And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him of ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world." So uh, important teaching there about the universality of Christ's mission, the urgency of it, um, and uh, that it uh, embraces here already um, it spills beyond Judea. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. Then when he came into Galilee, the Galileans received him having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again unto Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman, uh, means something like royal official, whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus would come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend, and they say unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Here endeth second lesson. Um, we praise and uh, bless uh, the Lord for indeed sending us Jesus, the Savior of the world. We dedicate ourselves to his service. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, for by the day spring from on high hath visited us, 
to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other in the whole church and body of Christ to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by his good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, for this state, county, and city of Savannah, for the communities in which we live, for their peace, order, and good government, and for the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression, and especially the people of Ukraine. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of the churches of Christ among all nations, and here in Savannah and at St. John's, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for the keeping of a holy Lent in almsgiving, prayer, and the giving uh, and fasting. Uh, for um, all those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that the Lord would comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. For those undergoing surgery or recovering from it, those suffering debilitating injury or infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, critical illness, mental or physical disability, for the very old and the very young and their caregivers, for widows, widowers, and orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for refugees, prisoners, and captives, all those facing, dealing with anxiety, depression, or mental illness, all those facing the challenge of sobriety, all women in childbirth, all those who are grieving, all those who are dying, and those who have departed this life in the faith of Christ, and are at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day, that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, guided by his holy word, strengthened by his Holy Spirit, we may serve and please the Lord in all that we do. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever. One God, world without end. Amen. Um, we beseech, uh, sorry. 
We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to pour thy grace into our hearts, though like as we do refrain our hearts, bodies from carnal feastings, so we may be inwardly delivered from all wantonness that may hurt the soul. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth all eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Once ye were darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers as may be most expedient for you according to his good and perfect will.